Joining us now is Trace Lissette, an actress and executive producer of Trans in Trumpland. Trace, welcome to the program. Hi, Joshua. How are you? I'm well. And before we begin, may I ask what pronouns should I use when referring to you? Oh, I'm old school. It's just she, her. She, her. <laughs> Thank you. Just wanted to make sure I had it right. Tell me about this documentary. I've watched some of it. It is really devastating. Just to give people an idea, here's one of the more poignant moments from the trailer for Trans in Trumpland. This was actually me when I was 12. Um, you know, I just want to let you know that no matter what the president says about you, you exist and you're human. That moment of reassurance is very poignant. How much of the documentary's focus overall is about reassurance? Uh, I, well, I think probably a good amount. I think for a lot of trans people, we kind of need that validation from someone else who's walked the walk um, because we don't often get that in our biological families. Um, I've been very lucky to have a trans mother by the name of Rhonda who took me under her wing when I was a teen to kind of uh, validate me in that way and show me the ropes, so to speak, of, of what this lifestyle and what this life is like in a country that is constantly trying to erase us. Can you explain what that means for people who may not be familiar with that term, a trans mother? What, what does that relationship involve for you? So for me, it's really um, anything from emotional support that um, or, or physical support that, you know, lies outside of the realm of what my biological mother may have been accustomed to giving me, um, you know, navigating the world in a specific way, um, survival skills, um, all of those things. Uh, I think come into play when you're dealing with chosen family and um, trans folks that that can kind of look after the next generation. I know that for me, I probably wouldn't be here without my trans mother. And I think a lot of trans people feel the same way um, about their trans parents. Yeah, I, I hear you on that. I know a lot of trans people who have kind of formed chosen families. I know that I have had a lot of gay dads over the years who have made my life a lot easier and kind of explained things that family units have to sort of learn about their LGBTQIA kids if they choose to. That's a lot of what you depict in the first few episodes of this docu-series is kind of how trans people learn to navigate the world and how some in their world learn to connect with them were there any overall messages or, or storylines that you wanted to portray in this series? Well, I think it was important to show what we're up against in terms of legislation and all of that and, and, and what we have to kind of bob and weave with every day in order to survive. But also, I guess it's important to show community and joy and what trans joy looks like. And so I think we did a good job of covering both sides of that pendulum. And uh, I think it's important to remain hopeful, especially now that Trump is out and Biden and uh, Kamala are in and, and we can hopefully be on our way and get some, some change going and, and really um, preserve what rights we do have, uh, because the last four years were so, were so scary for us. We spoke last week ahead of the passage of the Equality Act with one of its sponsors, Congressman David Cicilline, who is openly gay. My colleague Alicia talked about the Equality Act at the end of her program tonight. What is your sense of where we stand as a country in finally not being so reactionary and, and just heavy handed and bigoted about trans issues. I mean, it always seems to come down to bathroom access even now. And there are studies that have shown that even when trans people are able to use the bathroom that matches their gender identity, that there is no additional safety risk to the public, despite what supporters of these so-called bathroom bills seem to say. Where do you think we are in terms of not being stuck on all this stupid about being afraid to let trans people do something as, as simple and basic and dignified as go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think when HB2 was introduced in North Carolina, um, we kind of go over that with uh, the first episode and Ash in North Carolina. Um, I think that it just uh, showcased America's hate towards us and their paranoia really uh, around bathrooms. And um, it's, it's a fear that is not based in any fact because as you said, the trans people are more, more likely to um, run into a problem or be assaulted in the bathroom than the perpetrators. Um, and so it's really unfortunate, but I think a lot of the stupid talk that we deal with and the, and the hate that we deal with comes from us being foreign to uh, middle America. And a lot of that has to do with the stories that are told in TV and film and, and the lack of stories that are told in TV and film and, and also in the reality TV space, America just doesn't feel like they know trans people very well. And so I think a lot of times they're scared of what they don't know. Before I have to let you go, Trace, for someone who is trans in Trump land, who is living in parts of the country that are less welcoming, less affirming, what would you say to them based perhaps on what you maybe learned from this documentary? What is your message to trans people in Trump land? My biggest uh, message would be to find community. And if you have to do that over the internet or um, in unconventional ways, um, seek out people who are like-minded and who may be going through something similar to yourself. Um, I think that's what saved me was finding other trans people and connecting with them. I always tell people to find your, find your tribe and find your community and cling to it. Even if your own blood family doesn't quite understand you, or if you're living in a, in an area that is extremely hateful towards trans folks, um, try to put yourself in a, in a different environment, even if that just means online and seek out sameness wherever you can. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.